Hello everyone, this is Nielsen Uclis. I'm a developer here at Ordex POS Systems. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys today about EMV. Uh, this is a webinar we put together here to give an explanation to our current customers and some of our partners explaining uh, what is Ordex's plan with EMV, what is, uh, uh, how we're going to handle this when it comes around to October 2015. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about uh, EMV, what it is, and, and why this is being implemented all over the United States. Um, we're going to talk about the liability shift. This is a term that's been thrown around, that's been constantly floating around in all the articles and in all the bulletins about the EMV changes coming up. I want to talk about how that's going to affect our current customers and any other future customers, of course. Um, we also want to talk about the implementations and the hardware that Ordex POS is going to support right off the bat come around, uh, when 2015 comes around in October, of course. Um, we also want to talk about tip adjustment. Uh, this has got to be a little change of how the tip adjustment works from now because of how EMV is going to be implemented. And they're also going to give you some examples of hardware options that you guys have. Uh, we'll have you some pictures of certain models that you can see and get an idea of what they're going to look like when they basically become released by the procurement processors. So with that in mind, let's begin. So what is EMV and why? Well, first off, EMV stands for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa. Now, these three organizations were the ones that came up with this standard and published it back in 1995. Uh, this organization is, uh, the standard rather, is now uh, managed by uh, the EMV Co. organization, which now also has, aside from European MasterCard and Visa, other major credit card uh, providers, and they basically handle and manage the standard. Now, um, what EMV actually is, though, is really a, a microprocessor chip in a card. Uh, to kind of put it in uh, in more layman term, basically you have a computer in your card. It's a smart card. So anytime we have uh, any kind of embedded system like that can process information, that can make decisions based on uh, uh, what you communicate to it, it's a smart card. It's a smart device, a little, little small tiny device that's embedded in there. And the reason they implemented this is because they wanted to prevent fraudulent transactions when card is present. In other words, um, to prevent any, to, to reduce the risk that there's a way to get the credit card information, to intercept the communication between when you're paying and communicating with the payment processor, they're doing this um, by implementing new security algorithms uh, in the payment process. Now, these security algorithms, they're known as 3DS, 3DES rather, sorry, RSA, uh, SHA, and uh, Probably to most of you guys, this may not mean anything, but these algorithms are very uh, common in what we like to do with in terms of uh, online shopping. When you're talking about dealing with bank information online or shopping online and making payments online, they use these types of encryption algorithms, of course, to protect the data as you're communicating on the Internet. They're bringing this same idea down to credit cards to, in order to deal with the increasing fraud that's been happening in the United States. Now, there's two, another thing that, just I'm going to say two, but there's another thing that they have to do with this new standard is um, how to authenticate the credit card holder. Now, most of Europe and Canada and Australia, they're doing chip and pin. So what that is, is they have the chip in the credit card, of course, that they put in the device, and then they have to input their pin so that they are authenticated as the legitimate credit card owner, and the transaction goes through. Here in the United States, what we're going to implement is called chip and sign. And that's basically you put the credit card in, uh, let the chip get processed, and then you just have to sign a slip or you sign on the payment processing terminal. Um, this is, of course, U.S. and Mexico. They're going to implement this. Uh, I know that they eventually do plan to move to chip and pin. But as a United States is just getting now implemented with EMB, really is the last major market that hasn't implemented it. Uh, we're going to start, you know, slow but steady. Now. The liability shift. Well, to understand what the liability shift, you have to understand that when EMV gets rolled out across the credit card providers and the processors in 2015, October, uh, you have to know that it is not a mandate for you to use EMV. In other words, you don't have to necessarily, uh, you're not obligated by any organization, by any law for you to implement EMV in your store, in your retail shop. You don't have to buy any equipment, technically speaking. Now, should you choose to do that if you don't want to have these systems and you don't really care for implementing the systems for whatever reason, um, you will be responsible for any fraudulent claims on those transactions. 
In other words, the liability sh shift comes to this. If you choose not to use ENV capable systems when you do these credit card transactions, then you will be liable for any fraud claims that may arise from it. So that is really the meaning of this liability shift. Now, this liability shift is set to take effect in 2015 of October for USA merchants, except for gas stations who are going to be, who are going to have rather up until October 2017. Now, the good news is that by the time that this gets rolled out here for the regular USA merchants, uh, Ordix already is going to be capable of integrating with EMV terminals. So effectively, our Ordix customers are ready to go. You guys are ready to, to roll out EMV. There's nothing that's holding you back. All you really have to do is have your uh, credit card terminals ready to go, and our Ordix will also be ready to go. Now, there are three main ways to implement EMV in your system. Uh, the first way is not necessarily the ideal way, but it's still an option. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a terminal that um, for some reason you have to have it, but it's not necessarily supported yet with Ordix. You can still use that terminal. However, there will be no integration, which means that all the information that you need as far as your transaction, be it the total, the tip, all of that stuff, you have to input that directly on the credit card processing terminal yourself. And then now once you're done at the end of the night, you will reconcile that against the orders that you have in the Ordix POS system to make sure everything matches. If you were so to choose this route, if you want to not have any integration or you have a credit card rather uh, processing terminal that doesn't uh, integrate with Ordix, you can still use this option and our support will be able to walk you through the steps to make sure everything uh, checks out at the end of the night with those, uh, pro uh, rather the batches that you ran with the credit cards. Now, most people won't really do that, but what we're going to see is that for the majority majority of the POS companies for restaurants and retails, they're going to go for what is called a semi-integrated approach. And basically what this is going to mean is that the POS system, in this case Ordix, is going to communicate the information that it needs from the to the terminal, so to the credit card processing terminal. So, for example, I have a total of $10 and I have a tip of $5. My uh, Ordix is going to communicate with that terminal and say, hey, I need a transaction for this much, with this much tip, and then all the terminal is going to wait for us, of course, for the customer to provide that credit card and then process your transaction. This, of course, eliminates that manual process you would need to do should you go the no integration route, which is going to be very important later on when you see which terminal models we're going to integrate with, so hang tight for that. Um, there is also a, a fully integrated approach. Now, you're going to see this coming from the major retailers such as Walmart, Target, those chains, they're going to go a fully integrated EMV approach. And what this means is like embedded within the actual POS system itself, they're just going to have an EMV a, a reader attached to the system. And then they're going to take care of the processing from the beginning to the end. Um, that is what most of the mar major large features are going to choose to do. Um, but of course, uh, like I said earlier, restaurants and retailers are going to work with the same integrated approach. There is options that Ordex is looking into for the fully integrated uh, approach in the future, but right now we are going to be rolled out with semi-integrated comic tool genre 15. Tips. So just to give you a little breakdown, and you guys, most of you guys probably already know this, of course, is that the current way for us to do the tip adjustment is that the customer hands his credit card to the server, the server roll, rings it up, gets the receipt gives it to the customer back and the customer of course has the option to add the tip, sign and then leave. After the fact that it, where it be at the end of the night or right then and there, the server takes up the receipt and then can uh, whoever it may be, him or the manager, adjust that tip and uh, get the tip of course processes. That's how it, it is right now. Now because of the way that EMV is changing how this is working, uh, at the moment they will not allow tip adjustments. So you run a, you have to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to run the tip at the time of payment. So that the moment that the customer gives you that credit card, you have to not only ring up to say this is the total, you also have to include what is the tip on that same transaction, and you will not be able to basically do it after the fact. So the way that Ordix is going to deal with this uh, new change is that as soon as the you ring up the, the the bill or the sales receipt to the customer. It's already going to have the total, of course, for, for whatever it was their order. It's going to have a line for the tip. And then from there, then they just they give their credit card to the to the server. The server goes back to the terminal, rings up the order, or rings up the, 
the receipt, of course, um, gets the total, gets a new receipt, and that is going to show you the total, it's going to show you the tip, and is now going to have um, a signature for you to take back to the customer, customer signs it, leaves it on the table, and it's all good. Um, just so you know, uh, I, obviously this is a change in the way that it has to be done, it is part of the way that they're implementing the standard for now. They do are telling us, and of course they're not giving us any dates yet, but they're telling us in the future they will allow tip adjustment after the customer leaves. But at the moment that it rolls around, uh, as soon as 2015 comes around, October of course, they will not uh, allow it, no tip adjustment after the fact for now, but they are planning on implementing this in the future. Um, this will be, so we're going to handle it just like uh, similar to like project uh, property management systems work where you bring up everything on the first try. So, this is a little chart I just want to show you guys. Uh, you're going to see Verifone and Genico and Pax, which are the largest, the, the three largest pro credit card processing terminals in, in the world. They produce uh, the majority of them in the world. Um, and I wanted to show you uh, which of the people that credit card processes that some of you guys here you must see on the left that you're already far familiar with, First Data, GPS, Elevon, Tesis, and the ones that they already integrate with and that they're ready to go. Um, you may notice that in Genico right now, only supports that Tesis and Sterling, uh, we've been talking with Genico about this and they are planning on, of course, integrating with everyone else on, on that list, uh, but they're just not going to be ready just yet. But in the meantime, you still have plenty of options with Verifone, who integrates with all the ones here on the list, and so this patch integrates with everyone here on the list. Now, here's some models for the Verifone uh, credit card processing terminals. You have the VX520, the MX915, and the 925, and the VX805. Um, let me go to the next slide here, because this is, has some more interesting ones. And the reason I say that is because uh, this one is a regular terminal here on the left, an ICT220 and ICT250. But on the right, we have a wireless one. Now, this is very important because this goes back to the tips. And the reason I say this is because you're able to take this wireless terminal, take it to the customer's table, and the customer can then effectively put the card in themselves, put the information that they need, or rather not necessarily put the information, but you're going to see the total of your bill, you're going to see the tip, uh, you can choose the tip right then and there, and then that way the customer doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in a face-to-face -face thing where the, the, the server doesn't necessarily have to be aware of what they're getting tipped, so the customer can, you know, tip at, at their own uh, you could say privacy at the moment anyways. They, they ring their tip in, they finish it, and then they leave and they show the receipt and that is signed. Uh, that'll be an advantage of the wireless terminal. Um, now, Verifone, because I want to go back to them and their, their devices, they don't have a wireless one out just yet. They are planning on bringing one out. They just haven't told us the date. Um, just like this one is not necessarily out here, the IWL250 wireless isn't out yet, but it's going to be out in December 2015. Now, when that comes around, Oryx is going to be ready to integrate with them. So as soon as you're able to get it from your primary processor, we're going to be ready to integrate that with us. So to move on to the last one, PAX, MT30, uh, the FT30, and they have a, D2, a D10 wireless, of course. The same thing, we're ready to integrate with them because we have the specifications that they need for us to integrate with them. But it's not available out for purchase, and it won't be out until December 2015. And uh, to reiterate it, again, Verifone will have a wireless one. They just don't have one out ready yet. In the future, um, here on the left, you're going to see this ID Tech I Smart. And um, this, this little particular guy here is just the EMV reader. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where you have the option to do a full integration with uh, EMV, where the POS system does all the credit card processing. Um, you're going to be able to do that if you have an EMV reader just attached directly to that POS system. So we're going to be looking in 2016 as a, uh, with Ordix to get that going, to get a full implementation at EMV using some of these devices, the Verifone E255 and the Ingenico ICMP. All of these are, are effectively devices that we're looking to integrate with so that we're able to provide more options to our customers, we're able to provide ways so you guys can make different decisions and you're, you're going to have a wide variety of options to integrate and, and deal with the EMV uh, changes coming up, okay? So uh, I'm going to read off some questions here that you guys have asked us. 
Um, I'm going to have the answers ready for you. Uh, but I want to show you that uh, the, the next webinar is going to be in September 3rd, 2015. Um, until then, this is going to be like a follow-up webinar. So we're going to cover some more options, some more of the questions that we weren't able to have the answers to you guys just yet. But that's when to, that one was, excuse me, that's when this one's going to come around. We're going to send you guys invites. Um, we're also going to uh, send you guys this webinar recorded to you guys via email. We're also going to send you guys a receipt uh, sample of how the new receipt's going to look like when the EMV implementation hits. If you guys have any questions between now and uh, September 3rd, we always have our 24 by 7 support at our number, 561-807-1503. Should you have any concerns, any questions about uh, terminals and, and, and how any more things that were not cleared up in this presentation. And um, without ado, I have some questions here that I want to read to you guys. Let me start off with the very first one. It says here, um, just to confirm, existing swipers, MSRs, will only be good for gift cards and manager cards. And that is correct. <clears throat> Some of you guys that have those existing magnetic stripe readers attached to the terminals, that are only going to be available for the gift cards and the manager cards because you will have to process all credit card transactions through the EMV terminal from now on. And uh, this is actually the question that I kind of just answered, but just to give you guys a better idea and clarification. Do all cards go through the EMV reader or just EMV cards? Will the EMV reader replace our current card reader? Now, the terminals that we're integrated with have both EMV readers and MSR readers. In order to process payments, you will need to use the new EMV terminals. So any payments, even if it is a, a regular card without an EMV chip, you will still have to use the EMV terminal in order to process that transaction. Here's another question. Do you recommend we get the readers now so that they are ready to go before October? We First of all, we recommend that you first speak with your payment processor. The reason is because uh, even though the reader may be available out now, it doesn't mean that reader is compatible with your payment processor yet. So before you buy anything, the first person you should always check with is with your payment processor. If you can buy it and if it's ready to go and there's no additional configuration for them to do, and then after you get that terminal, you come back and check with us to verify that it is compatible with Ordix. Now, does Verifone have a wireless union or just a second and third provider? And I, of course, I answered this a little earlier, but just to clarify, yes, Verifone does have one in the works. They have not told us uh, what date is going to be available. Um, as soon as they do, let us know we're going to be able to integrate as soon as they have it out. Because, of course, uh, that's very important for us, that's especially with the tip adjustment. Uh, we want to make sure that with the main three process payment credit card per, uh, processing terminal manufacturer that you guys have the option to go wireless on all of them. What about uh, here's another question? What about the liability issues during the transition? Are we liable after October 2015 in the, if a non EMV card is used? And the answer is yes. The moment that this October headline a uh, deadline hits, really what this means is you are now liable for non-EMV transactions that you run through your business. So the merchant, being you, uh, is going to take that liability for, for any non-EMV transactions. So you have the option to run them, but you will be liable should sure, it turn out to be a fraudulent transaction and you have to go through that process. The banks will no longer be liable as they normally are right now. So it will be the merchant. Another question. I may have missed it, but how are we going to process cards when delivering food off-site? The answer is you are going to process them as you do right now, but because the card is not present to be used on that EMV terminal, the transaction is not going to be EMV compliant. So in other words, you're going to have to get the customer to read that information from you like you normally do now. And the EMV transaction really takes effect when that, per, uh, that credit card uh, processing terminal communicates with that EMV chip. Of course, if the credit of the customer is over the phone, you're not able to do that. So because of that, it is not a VMV transaction and such that will be a non-EMV, uh, rather, uh, a transaction that falls outside of the EMV system. And so you will be liable for these kinds of orders. Which ones will be NFC compatible or Apple Pay? The majority of our terminals that we're integrating will have MSC compatibility as well as Apple Pay. But you always want to check with your payment processor first before you buy them, of course. Um, and they will give you the 100% go if they're able to, to use that system with them. And uh, 
Of course, I think that it's kind of just reiterating some of the previous questions that they had. So, so taking in taking card info over the phone is compliant, and it is not EMV compliant when you do it over the phone. But you will be able to take it, and then as such, um, you will be liable for any fraud resulting from that order that you take over the phone. Do you know if a non-compliant swipe is performed, will it come back rejected if counterfeit? Non-compliant swipes are still going to work. It just means that if the charge is disputed for any any way and is determined to be fraud, then the liability will fall back on the merchant. But you're not going to get any rejection or anything. It's just you're going to be able to run it through, uh, assuming your process is going to still support that. But basically, they, they're probably going to have to because not everyone is going to be 100% EMB ready as far as the on the credit card processing side, it really depends on, on who you're dealing with. But for the most part, you are still going to be able to run that card. Uh, but as far as the banks are concerned, their deadline for them that they mentioned is October 2015. And after that, that's it. Any non EMV transactions will be liable on the merchant. Do you have a sample receipt showing the tip line? And yes, uh, we will be sending a sample receipt uh, showing that tip line through email along with this webinar. So until a mobile EMB reader is available, all card not present transactions will be will not be compliant, correct? And that is correct. Any transaction where the card is not uh, processed by that EMB reader will not be EMB compliant. So pre-auth issues and that's question. This was actually pretty important. So pre-authorizing or running tabs will go away. Effectively, uh, yes, they, they will have to go away. What we're deciding here at Ordex, and this is something we're going to cover in the next webinar, is deciding where they're giving the customer or you guys the option to still run tabs or to still run pre-authorizations and then have the option to, to keep adding to them in a non-EMV compliant way. And that's something that we still have to discuss here internally, how we're going to effectively handle it, where we're going to say, you know, you have the choice between running compliant and not compliant or just straight out you won't be able to run tabs at all. Um, it's something that uh, we're going to be discussing, like I said, in the next webinar. Uh, so stay tuned for that answer. But uh, as of now, the, if, if, even if we were to allow, of course, it would be non-EMV uh, non compliant because of the nature of a pre-authorization and tab is running. Now, if we use an iPad with the right type of reader, will it work? Um, effectively, if you have iPads right now with that reader, you, you will only be able to do those, those manager cards and you're only going to be able to do gift cards. Um, you will need an EMV reader to, to run those EMV cards. But since those are not EMV readers, you're just going to, they're only going to work for those two things I mentioned earlier, for the manager cards and the gift cards. How do you enter tips for reporting at the close of shift? Well, it is important to, to get a good clarification on, but because Ordix is going to be doing a semi-integration, Ordix is going to, already going to have the tip information for the transactions that you do on those EMV terminals. So there's not going to be any need to enter anything for the reporting because Oryx is going to have that system, it's going to already have that in the databases. And so, of course, you'll be able to run reports on that. Now, it's another question. Is the tip amount entered on the Oryx screen and is, the to is that total amount sent to the VX520? And then, yes, effectively, you, you put on the, the information that, the, that you guys need in terms of the order and the tip. It's going to be on the Oryx screen. And then once you hit the process option, then you're just going to be able to communicate with the terminal or Artix is going to communicate with the terminal in the background, take care of what it needs to take care of and wait for the approval or deny from the credit card processing terminal and then go from there. So you will print the sales slip with the tip line and then take it to the table in the folio presenter. And uh, this is kind of good for me to kind of reiterate that process of how we're going to do it now. And the answer is yes, the server will bring the sales slip to the customer with the tip line. They're going to confirm the total and give the sales slip back to the server with the card. The server will input the card in the EMV reader and have it pro and have it process the transaction and then bring the receipt back to the customer to sign. Okay. Now, another question. Will the Ordex upgrade be optional? And the answer is, uh, well, yes, it, it is optional because just like the EMV implementation is something that you have an option to not do, you don't have to... Uh, run uh, your credit card transactions, your debit card transactions through EMV compliance systems. Um, you can definitely ignore this upgrade, or rather, not necessarily upgrade the upgrade itself, but 
you don't have to effectively run the transaction in the EMV way. You can still run it the old way. And of course, uh, like I explained earlier, you would then accept the liability ship that comes upon you should it come down to a fraudulent transactions that you have to deal with. But uh, yes, it is completely optional. There is no uh, mandate for this to be implemented. And I believe those are all my questions that I have that I, we answered from you guys. So um, you guys stay tuned. We're going to send you guys this through email. Like I said, we're going to send you the receipt demo or the sheet picture to see how it's going to look from now on. Uh, we'll be doing the webinar on September 3rd, 2015. You guys will be getting the invites. Um, until then, we'll see you the next time. And if you have any questions, give us a call. Okay? Look back.